So fungi can be a really important partner for your garden. They can do things like increase the nutrient availability of the soil to your plants. They can help uh, increase resistance to disease. They can help increase production. Um, and they can sometimes produce a tasty snack. If you don't know me, my name is Rachel. Um, welcome to Oxart Gardening. Uh, I like to talk about the science behind stuff and I especially like to talk about mushrooms because I feel like it's something that not a lot of home gardeners know about or think about and uh, like I said I think they can be really important partners in your garden if you're thinking about them. So when you're thinking about fungal partners for your garden, there's three main categories that these can fall into, um, and they can be overlapping. Something doesn't have to be just in one category or another. Um, so there are the edible mushrooms. This is using some of your garden space to also produce mushrooms that you can eat. And this can be really great because, for example, if you're mulching your pathways with wood chips, um, then you can produce food out of the walkways and it doesn't really present an issue for using that as a walkway long term because a lot of the time the mushrooms aren't fruiting, they're just sitting there digesting the wood chips. And something like wine cap, which is really tasty edible mushroom, it is also really good for those pathways out in your garden. Um, as it's living there and producing you something edible, it's also increasing organic matter in the soil and it is also increasing the available phosphorus for your plants. So um, having this mushroom in your garden is increasing the nutrients that are available to your plants to even use. These are also known to increase uh, bacterial diversity in the soil, which if you've heard me talk before, having a live diverse set of microbes in your soil is really key to having healthy soil which produces healthy plants. Hold on, the neighbors have started playing music so we're gonna come on to the porch where it's a little quieter. So there are two other uh, big categories of fungi to think about as partners for your garden and that is ectomycorrhizal fungi and endomycorrhizal fungi. And what mycorrhizal just means is that it interacts with the roots. So ectomycorrhizal fungi, ecto meaning like outside, they will wrap themselves around the roots of the plants that they interact with and form this relationship where they are exchanging nutrients back and forth with the plant. Um, usually it is the plant supplying carbon and the fungi supplying other micronutrients that it is able to forage for in the soil. Meanwhile, endomycorrhizal fungi, um, endo meaning inside, um, these will actually penetrate the roots of the plants that they interact with and then have the same type of relationship where they are exchanging nutrients. Now generally what you'll see is ectomycorrhizal will be associated with things like trees, um, things with big woody roots, and then endomycorrhizal is associated with almost everything else. Um, there are notable exceptions though um, that are notable for us gardeners. Uh, brassicas do not form mycorrhizal relationships, blueberries do not form mycorrhizal relationships, and spinach actually does not form mycorrhizal relationships. And so a plant that can form a mycorrhizal relationship with a fungi is going to have increased uh, competitiveness for nutrients versus plants that can't form mycorrhizal relationships um, because like I said, those fungi can more easily traverse the soil. They can go out and collect nutrients um, in a way that uh, plants tend to struggle to. So, um, I mean, a plant could go and get those nutrients themselves, but it is an energy drain for the plant to actually make the roots. And it takes a, long, uh, a bit longer for the plant to make those roots as opposed to just plugging into an existing mycorrhizal network that already has all of this. Uh, mycorrhizal fungi can also help with water uptake for the plants as well as nutrient uptake um, and as this mycorrhizal fungi is existing in the soil it is increasing the carbon uh, content the organic matter content of the soil all right let's talk about where these categories can kind of overlap and where they can't um, one of the other main differences between endomycorrhizal and ectomycorrhizal is that your ectomycorrhizal, the outside ones, can fruit. Um, so wine caps are an ectomycorrhizal uh, 
mushroom. So you can have an edible fruiting mushroom that is also forming a mycorrhizal relationship with your uh, trees, shrubs, anything else that would be compatible with that. Um, meanwhile, an endomycorrhizal actually doesn't fruit. And it can be really hard to tell because it doesn't fruit whether or not you actually have them in your garden, especially because the mycelium are not visible to the naked eye. Let's go on a quick field trip to look at mycelium. So if you lift up mulch in your garden, usually this is where you would find it. Um, this white stuff is the mycelium. All of this is uh, fungi. You should be able to find stuff like that in most healthy soils, even if you haven't specifically planted mushrooms. Um, so if you don't have it, then you might think about uh, ways to remediate your soil. And then with endomycorrhizal, since you can't see them, um, the only way to really know like for sure, for sure that you have them is to send some soil to a lab for testing. Um, however, that's kind of expensive and not really necessary in my opinion. So endomycorrhizal fungi are so um, prevalent that it's basically impossible to not find them in the soil, um, although they aren't unkillable. For example, um, if you have a, like a large field that you are intentionally leaving fallow for a really long time, um, not planting anything that would be compatible with those endomycorrhizal fungi, then they could start dying off and you could see reduced or eliminated populations of mycor uh, mycorrhizal fungi. Um, additionally, if you live on like new construction uh, where they just scraped all the topsoil and you're left with whatever was underneath, um, new foundations, then mycorrhizal fungi were not living in that deeper soil. They're usually closer to the top. So if all the topsoil has been scraped, then you might not have mycorrhizal directly um, in your yard. Now, because these fungi are so prevalent in our world, it's sort of a, if you build it, they will come type situation. Um, if you are building healthy, nutritious soil that is full of organic matter and plants that these fungi want to interact with, they will usually start showing up. Um, but if you want to speed that process up and or know like for sure, for sure that you have these fungi um, or you want to get uh, a real jump start on this, you can inoculate with commercial products. Um, I found a couple that I would recommend linked in the description below. I haven't used any of them, but these are products that if I saw them, I would probably buy to try myself. Additionally, if you've heard me talk about Organic Rev, it's this fertilizer that's not really a fertilizer. It is a bunch of organic carbon um, and humic matter that you can put into your soil in micronized form. It also has a bunch of these beneficial microbes that are good for your soil. It doesn't necessarily have endomycorrhizal fungi in it, but it is shown to um, stimulate and attract those types of fungi. So that can also be another thing to add organic matter to your soil as you're going and also start attracting those fungi faster. You can get a free sample of the Rev if you're willing to pay shipping um, and if you use the link in the description and you decide you want to get a whole bottle you can um, use my code which will be automatically loaded in uh, for 10% off. So just to recap the three main categories that we're looking at um, as partners for our garden there are the um, edible fruiting mushrooms that you can use to like fill up the in-between space or the walkways with something edible in your garden. There are the ectomycorrhizal fungi, which form relationships with large, uh, like woody plant roots, like trees and shrubs. Uh, and then there are the endomycorrhizal, which have microscopic mycelium that forms relationships with most other plants that you could plant in your garden, notably not brassicas, blueberries, or spinach. If you found this helpful, you want to learn more about mushrooms in the garden and some of the ways that I incorporate mushrooms into the garden, check out this playlist up here. It'll show you how I've inoculated with wine cap mushrooms in my garden, how I've inoculated logs with uh, edible mushrooms, and uh, just general information about mushrooms in the garden. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, happy gardening!